Well, <laughs> out of all the things I'd expect to see out here, a toilet seat is not one of them. This video is a long time coming, and as the title of this video indicates, this is my favorite documentary film camera, the Fuji GSW 690 Mark III. I purchased it back in February of 2021, and I've been using it nearly every day since. And uh, this video is not going to be a review, but rather just how this uh, camera has really helped my photography. Um, and, and how it sort of changed my perspective on uh, what I wanted to shoot, what I like to shoot, and uh, just overall how I uh, approach any given image. So uh, let's get after it. so graceful now this video is not a review and it's gonna be a huge compilation of videos and photos that you guys have not seen uh, over the last year of shooting this camera um, going through all these places photographing in the town of Holyoke photographing Northampton photographing a lot of Western Massachusetts and some of the areas that uh, I kind of I, I grew up in you know those are some of the things that I really like to to take a closer look at things that I am taking a closer look at currently and things that I'm you know sort of easing into, um, but it's been a whole lot of fun to document these things, especially out in Holyoke. I've photographed a lot of homeless encampments. I've made friends with a lot of uh, the homeless population there, and it's, it's, a, it's a really sensitive subject. It's not one that I want to broach on a YouTube video. It's just not the place for it. I don't want to trivialize the, the issue at all, but um, I do want to show you just some brief video and some photos that I've taken around some homeless encampments in Holyoke and, and just how dramatic things can change. Really, really horribly sad conditions out here under this overpass here in Holyoke. Um, this little spot here has been uh, a little a homeless hideout for uh, a couple of years now, but because they've been doing a lot of construction around the area, they've been utilizing this area the town has to um, kind of house some of their things. But now that they're gone, construction's over, they've just sort of left it back to the homeless people and there's needles strewn about, debris, trash everywhere. And that's sort of, uh, sort of how it goes, I guess.
One of the things I find really fascinating about this camera is the myths that sort of surround it. One of the things that people always say about this camera is that it doesn't take great portraits. And uh, I gotta say, honestly, over the last year shooting this camera, I've taken some of my favorite portraits uh, ever. And uh, most of them environmental portraits. I've been lucky enough to meet uh, farmers, hunters, uh, several homeless people. Um, and I, I've been able to photograph them in a way that I think is interesting and a little bit more dynamic than just sort of standalone um, portraiture where it's, you know, in studio stuff or, you know, close ups of, of faces. Obviously, I like the detail shots, but with the GSW, it sort of forces you to take a step back. You can really make it work for you if you're, you know, clever enough. Um, not that I'm very clever, but like, they say that this is not a great lens for portrait photography because you're not going to be able to knock the background out of focus. But if you kind of work it just enough in a right way, you can make it work really, really well. You know, I think the first portrait I ever took on this camera was of Howard. Howard is a uh, owner of a small farm on the Oxbow. And uh, it was a bright sunny day and I just saw him up in a plum tree pulling out plums. And I drove by and I was like, I got to turn around and go talk to that guy. Actually, I think the day that I even saw him, I was recording video, but I didn't record anything of him uh, actively doing anything. It wasn't until a couple of days later that I came back and worked with him a little bit more, you know, exclusively. But uh, I'm, I'm sure I have video of that. Why don't I just cut to it instead of me talking about it? So as you guys can see, the clouds have come in. And also you may notice that I got this thing right here. This is a, uh, I forget what kind of pepper Howard told me. Austin Haga, it was a word that I cannot pronounce. It was a word that he said to me three times and every time I tried to pronounce it, I was completely wrong. He was very funny. Uh, he had a very dry sense of humor, but he was a really, really, really nice guy. Rather tall. He had this thing and I was like, this is cool. And he was like, you can have it. And I was like, okay. And he said, uh, he said, you can just, you can just eat it like that. He's like, the seeds are not mature enough to do anything with. so. Uh, go ahead and eat it. He said it's sweet. Hmm. I don't know about sweet. It tastes a lot like just like a green pepper. When we first moved here 30 years ago, we were told, and it was true, it was the first week of May. Like, you know, like at the end of the first week of May, it would be when you could reliably count on asparagus coming up, right? But now it comes up in the middle of April. So a good two weeks at least earlier. And you know, so, you know, asparagus is, does not listen to either climate change activists or climate change deniers. So they've been so so the fact is that, that they're taking they're not just doing it like, oh yeah, we had an unusually warm day here, let's sprout. You know, they're they're doing the trends and so yeah, I'm I'm a they've sold me completely on climate change, that it's real. Shooting here at the Oxbow, what I am dubbing the Oxbow Archive, uh, revisited because of uh, my favorite work by Joel. Uh, Sternfeld and uh, I've been really having a lot of fun coming out here and photographing uh, this area quite a bit. You know, the Oxbow Archive has been really important to me. Um, going through Joel Sternfeld's work there and obviously his documentation around uh, the mid 2000s was hugely instrumental in kind of opening my eyes to what documentary landscape photography could be. Um, and my work there is sort of like an ongoing uh, documentation of that landscape that Sternfeld started and uh, how that landscape has changed over time. Nearly 20 years later, it's it's a vastly different uh, landscape than it was in the pictures that he took there. So I do love that idea of, of being able to kind of 
continue a project even if it wasn't started by me just some some project and and just being able to like you know piggyback off that is is exciting to me and uh that's sort of one of the reasons why i've loved going out to the oxbow i fell in love with that landscape watching sunsets there watching sunrises there watching the cornfields come and go you know all the agriculture all the the wildlife watching certain birds come in and go as the year passes it's always just so fascinating to me uh and it's been probably one of my most favorite things one of the things i look forward to most uh, in photography. There she is. Fuji GSW really only signified by that uh, wording on the top and the fact that it's the 65 millimeter f 5.6 don't get it confused with the gw which is the 90 millimeter f 3.5 a little bit faster a little more uh tight than this one but this is a camera that uh, I really absolutely love and uh, has changed my entire perspective on documentary photography. The great thing about documentary photography is like you can just do whatever you want. You know, you can really hone in on a subject, whether it's a landscape or a person or an idea or a group of people, you know, whatever it is, you can really kind of dig through it with a fine tooth comb. And even though the 6x9 is great for that, it really can open the door to maybe more intentional images with the 4x5 and truth be told the 6x9 to the 4x5 it's a pretty big difference but not as big as you might think um so it's a great bridge to 4x5 and uh you know when you're looking at projects you know through a microscope you can really kind of figure out what works and what doesn't work before i picked up this camera i was sort of lost uh, like many of you might have been or are when it comes to photography, especially film photography, it's kind of challenging. You're always being told, this camera is so good. This lens is incredible. This film, you should try the 10 best film cameras ever. So much misinformation, so many opinions out there. And eventually all these opinions sort of turn into fact and you get lost in it, you get sucked in and you sort of lose track of what's important. And what's important is making images that are important right? It's not the gear that's important. It's the images that you make. And I struggled with that a lot early on. I was going from camera to camera, from lenses, different lenses, figuring out all this kind of stuff, what kind of film I want to use, how to develop different types of film, you know, developing here in my bathtub that hasn't uh, evolved at all. I'm still developing film in my bathtub, but like, you know, learning how to develop, learning how to scan all these things. Like it's such a learning process and it's really overwhelming and challenging at the beginning. But once you find a camera that suits your needs, you got to just stick with it. Don't worry about the gear, worry about the images. That's what's important. You know, I've been thinking more and more about photographers and the cameras that they've chosen to shoot throughout their career. And Gary Winogrand is somebody that comes to mind immediately. If you've ever looked at his Leica M4, it's thoroughly worn out. And uh, in fact, if you look at the back plate of that camera, it's exposed sprocket marks on the back of the, uh, the pressure plate. And it's, it's, you could almost make out an image on the thing. And it just goes to show that, you know, once a photographer finds a camera that really puts them in a place to create some of their best images, they don't deviate from it. And we live in a time where we have a surplus of things and gear to utilize and people are constantly going through cameras and lenses and film stocks and trying to find what speaks to them. And uh, once you find the one that, that really makes, makes you comfortable, makes you feel like you're creating your best work, you gotta stick with it, you know? I've sold a lot of cameras that I've, I've really liked and you know, months later or years later, I go like, ah, I wish I kept that camera. And I think we've all been in that position. But uh, there's something about this GSW that just feels like the camera that I was meant to use. And uh, I don't know if that's a, you know, I don't know if this camera is the one that's gonna make you 
feel differently about photography or change your perspective on it or even make your best images. But um, for me, it really has changed my entire perspective on photography and made me a better photographer. Wrap that shit up in a bow because we're done.